God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Where true love is dwelling, God is dwelling there. Love's own loving presence, love does ever share. Love of Christ has made us out of many one. In our midst is dwelling God's eternal Son. Give him joyful welcome, love him and revere. Cherish one another with a love sincere. It was you who saved us, Lord. We will praise your name without ceasing. We heard with our own is O God. Our fathers have told us a story of the things you did in their days. You yourselves in days long ago to plant them you uproot the nations. To let them spread, you laid peoples low. No sword of their own won the land. No arm of their own brought them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you love them. It is you, my King, my God who granted victory to Jacob. Through you we beat and our foes. In your name we trampled our aggressors. For it was not in my bow that I trusted, nor yet would I say by my sword. It was you who saved us from our foes. It was you who put our foes to shame. All day long our boast was in God, and we praised your name without ceasing. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. It was you who saved us, Lord. We will praise your name without ceasing. Spare us, Lord. Do not let your people be put to shame. Yet now you have rejected us, disgraced us. You no longer go forth with our armies. You make us retreat from the foe, and our enemies plunder as it will. You make us like sheep for the slaughter, and scatter us among the nations. You sell your own people for nothing, and make no profit by the sale. You make us the taunt of our neighbours, the laughing stock of all who are near. Among the nations you make us a byword, among the peoples a thing of derision. All day long my disgrace is before me, my face is covered with shame. At the voice of the taunt of the scoffer, 
at the side of the foe and avenger. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to His Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. Spare us, Lord, do not let your people be put to shame. Arise, Lord, redeem us because of your love. This befell us that we had not forgotten you, though we had not been false to your covenant, though we had not withdrawn our hearts, though our feet had not strayed from your path, yet you have crossed us in a place of sorrows and covered us with the shadow of death. Had we forgotten the name of our God, or stretched out hands to the God, would not God have found this out? He who knows the secrets of the heart, it is for you we face death all day long, and are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake, O Lord, why do you sleep? Arise, do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face from us and forget our oppression and misery? We are brought down low to the dust. Our body lies prostrate on the earth. Stand up and come to a help. Redeem us because of your love. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. Arise, Lord, redeem us because of your love. Listen to the word of the Lord, you nations. Make it known to coasts and islands far away. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The way of the righteous is level. You make smooth the path of the righteous. In the path of your judgments, O Lord, we wait for you. Your memorial name is the, is the desire of our soul. My soul yearns for you in the night. My spirit within me earnestly seeks you. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. If favour is shown to the wicked, he does not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness he deals perversely and does not see the majesty of the Lord. O Lord, your hand is lifted up, but they see it not. Let them see your zeal for your people and be ashamed. Let the fire for your adversaries consume them. O Lord, you will ordain peace for us. You have wrought for us all our works. O Lord, our God, other lords besides you have ruled over us, but your name alone we acknowledge. They are dead, they will not live. They are shades, they will not arise. To that end you have visited them with destruction and wiped out all remembrance of them. But you have increased the nation, O Lord. You have increased the nation, you are glorified. You have enlarged all the borders of the land. O Lord, in distress they sought you, they poured out a prayer when your chastening was upon them, like a woman with child, who writhes and cries out in her pangs, when she is near her time. So were we because of you, O Lord. We were with child, we writhed. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have wrought no deliverance in the earth, 
and the inhabitants of the world have not fallen. Your dead shall live, their bodies shall rise. O dwellers in the dust, awake and sing for joy. For your dew is a dew of light, and on the land of the shades you will let it fall. Come, my people, enter your chambers, and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while, until the wrath is past. For behold, the Lord is coming forth out of his place, to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth will disclose the blood shed upon her, and will no more cover her slain. O dwellers in the dust, awake and sing for joy. For the dew of the Lord shall bring you light. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. For the dew of the Lord shall bring you light. A reading from a sermon by St. Peter Chrysologus. As God sees the world tottering to ruin because of fear, he acts unceasingly to bring it back by love, invited by grace, to hold it by charity, and clasp it firmly with affection. Hence he washes the earth, grown old in evil, with the avenging flood. He calls Noah the father of a new world, speaks to him gently and gives him kindly confidence. He gives him fatherly instruction about the present and consoles him with good hope for the future. He did, he did not give orders, but in, he did not give orders, but instead shared in the work of enclosing together in the ark all living creatures on the earth. In this way, the love of being together was to banish the fear born of slavery. What had been saved by a shared work was to be preserved by a community of love. God calls Abraham from among the nations and makes his name great. He also makes him the father of those who believe, accompanies him on his journeys and takes care of him among foreign peoples. He enriches him with possessions, honours him with triumphs and binds him to himself by promises. He snatches him from harm, looks after him hospitably and astonishes him with a son he had given up hope of ever having. All this he does, so that filled with so many good things, and drawn by the great sweetness of divine love, Abraham might learn to love God, and not to be afraid of him, to worship him by love, not by trembling in fear. He comforts the fugitive Jacob in, in his sleep. On his way back he calls him to the contest, and grasps him with a restless arms. This was to teach him to love and not to fear the father of the contest. He invites Moses to be the liberator of his people, calling him with a fatherly voice and speaking to him, to him with a father's love. The events that we have recalled where the hearts of men were fired with the flame of the love of God and their senses flooded to intoxication with that love, led them, wounded by love, to begin to want to look upon God with their bodily eyes. How could the narrowness of human vision enclose God, whom the world cannot contain? The law of love has no thought about what will be, what ought to be, or what can be. Love knows nothing about judgment, is beyond reason, and is incapable of moderation. Love takes no relief from the fact that its object is beyond possibility, nor is it cured by difficulties. If love does not attain what it desires, it kills the lover. So it goes where it is led, not where it ought to go. Love breeds desire that becomes so inflamed as to make its way towards what is forbidden. Love cannot bear not to have sight of what it loves. That is why holy people thought all that they had merited was nothing if they could not see the Lord. That is why love that longs to see God has the spirit of devotion 
even though it lacks judgment. That is why Moses dares to say, If I have found favour in your sight, show me your face. And why another says, Show me your face. Finally, that is why the nations fashioned images. In these false things, they wanted to see with their own eyes what they were worshipping. As a mother comforts her sons, so I will comfort you, says the Lord, and help will come to you from Jerusalem, the city I have chosen. At the sight your heart will rejoice, your, at the sight your heart will rejoice. I will give salvation to Zion, Israel shall have sight of my glory. At the sight your heart will rejoice. Let us pray. Clear a pathway, Lord, in our hearts to make ready for your only Son so that when he comes we may serve you in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.